everyone. Today I'm going to be painting Lord Fang, as you can see here. Um, I've just started a little bit of it before the video, so his sword's painted silver, but the rest's going to change because it was just a test. So I'm trying something new in this video in showing what Richard Pio, sorry if I've pronounced that wrong, suggested, and maybe showing a paint list at the start of the video. Just to try and save some time, I've just gone for taking a photo of all the paints that I'll use in the rest of the video, so let me know if that's any help to anybody or if I should remove it. So we'll be starting off with my dark grey to um, colour in Lord Fang's body and his cape as well. For this model we're going to be using the technique of um, going from sort of the shadow colour up to the highlighting up to white again. Um, I've used this technique before as opposed to starting it with white and then adding a shader to it to add the uh, shadows in. But I myself prefer this technique I think it gives better results by the end and Robbie G had left in the comments that he prefers this one too so I've gone back to it for Lord Fang. Um, next I'm moving on to Ultramarine Blue for doing the inside of his cape, uh, his headband and his little cape tassels. I'm also going to get the hilt of his sword in blue as well as you can see. A uh, few little mistakes so I'll touch those up Afterwards, the blue just bled over the, the top of the cape. Uh, now we're going to a dark grey. This is Necromancer Cloak. And this is for his hair. So I'll just carefully go around the edges of his hair and then fill in the, the larger spaces. I'm using the Regiment Brush by Army Painter for all of this so far. Being very careful on his little eyebrows. You can see I've managed to cover it all there and careful around his face and I didn't get any on so there'll be no touching up there. Next is the Claymore Blade which is my light silver. This will be retouching up his little head um, dressing. Um, I've already done his sword. Um, I was just testing out the colours previously before I'd realised I was going to film any of this. That's his headrest done. And then it's gold for his belt. Being very careful using my detail brush there, making sure I don't get any on the bits I've already painted. And his buckles for his shoes as well. As I said, just be very, very careful with a fine detail brush there. And now I'm going to shade the skin using the zombie shader, which is my light brown wash. I'm going to be careful around his eyes, which I'd already painted white and filled in with a black shader just to get the edges in. Again, just being careful on his hands. And colour his sword in the same. And then I've got a blue tone by Army Painter as well, which is a blue wash. And I'm just going to shade in the inside of his cape, his headband, and his little tassels very, very carefully on the tassels, trying not to get any of the blue ink on um, his grey. As you can see, I'm taking the paint off of his hat quite a lot while I'm painting this model, but it doesn't matter as I'm going to be highlighting it up with several more layers anyway. So it's, if anything, it's showing me what needs to highlight. Doing my usual Arcadia Quest base here of Moon Mournfang every time. I still can't learn the name Mournfang Brown, but luckily you've now got the reference at the start of the video to go back to. I'm trying to be extra careful here he's got a lot of dangly <laughs> dangly bits hopefully you can see that's applied quite evenly again not too fussed around the very edges as that will get another coat by the end so I'm switching to a lighter grey now and I'm going to start highlighting up being quite generous um, just trying to leave the deepest parts with the um, filthy suit grey which is the darker grey I'm trying to bring up more of the white colour in his uh, little outfit. Um, using the regiment brush again, um, I do want to apply this quite liberally. Um, he does appear to be wearing a white suit, so that's what I'm aiming for by the end. Plenty on all the circles of his hat, all the little bobbles. 
Uh, I just noticed I not mentioned that I used the the blue ink on his little head dressing, which is I'm trying to give the sort of blue sparkly effect. So it was silver base and then blue ink. So that's me finished with this the lighter grey. Hopefully you can see it looks like he's getting a bit of 3D colouring. It's starting to come out nicely, getting lighter. So I'll do this a similar um, touch up with the ultramarine blue on his cape just trying to leave the darkest bits in 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 the ink wash in the shadow being careful not to spill over the top this time just going to do the same on his little ties for his cape and on the along the edge of his sword as well there do the same along his head dressing his little band And going to highlight up his sword and the very edges of his headdressing here as well, just to give the effect of the light hitting in the shiny parts. So down the centre of the sword and along the top and down the edge of the blade. Both sides. And we'll do the same with the bright gold on his belt buckle and his um, the buckles on his shoes as well. Next we're going back to the survivor skin. Um, the model was base coated in Barbarian skin which is the the War Paints colour primer and uh, this is a 99 slash 100% match so I'm just going to put him back to the colour he was in all of the skin except the sort of deepest crevices to try and leave the shadows where the shadows would fall. Get his forehead, his chin, his cheeks most of his nose, all the all the points at least, his fingers and his palms, um, his hat, the backs of his hands. I've just noticed uh, I missed his moustache. I thought it was part of his um, mouth, so I've gone back to the necromancer's cloak for that. And next I'm switching to my palest skin, just to get the very tips now, so the tip of his chin, the tip of his nose, the tip of his nostrils, his cheekbones, and his fingertips as well here. You can see he's starting to look a lot more human-like. Trying to get under his eyes, just above his eyes, just to give a slight uh, shine. So we're going down to, to uh, it's brain matter beige, it's from the zombie side set, but it's basically white. So I'm going to do up his eyeballs, bring those back up. Same along the edges of his teeth, making them shiny white. And then eventually I will move on to finishing off his little outfit and his cape and his hat. All the grey is going to get highlighted up. I'm um, going to his skull on his uh, little sword. Both sides of that, being careful on the back side, it's very difficult. I'm using the detail brush here for the skull. And obviously all of his face was detail brush. I'm going to use the detail brush down the edge of his cape because to show this the edge is catching the light the most. Be very careful along the edge of his trousers and his jacket. Just catching the very edges here, just the white on the very tips of everything. I'm not sure I used the word edges enough there, but I'm also painting the top of his cape as well. And down the back of his arms. And all the hat, just the very tips. You can see I've added a little holder to the bottom of the model now because I really don't want to be touching the hat all the time. And I switched to the dry brush to do the back of the cape as well as just the detail brush to get those creases under his neckline. Tiniest bit of paint I can manage over and over, just bringing out the very tips of each of his um, riffles in his cape. Hopefully that looks quite good. I was fairly happy with it. You could make him lighter if you wanted and change each shade of the, the greys, I think, but that was fairly satisfying. I'm taking my brightest blue now just to give the highlights on his on all the blue areas, so just the very tips. Being very, very careful and, and using very little paint here is it was quite a step up on the the blue. If you've got a if you've got a blue between the two, you could be less careful I think but because this was such a a big leap in the tone I was, I was using my thinnest brush and being as careful as I could 
So I'm back to the filthy suit here just to highlight up the hair. Just catching his eyebrows slightly with a detail brush, getting all of his curls. Taking off most of the paint each time on my on my nail just before I apply it. I really didn't want to drown this the highlights of his hair in paint. Getting his moustache just a little bit as well. And there you go. Finally I'm going to use the Agrilan Earth and apply this very, very generously as always to the Arcadia Quest models. I'm trying to get a big thick layer on top. And then as that dries it cracks. Magic before your eyes. And that's Lord Fang finished. I was fairly happy with the outcome, I hope you all are. So I've made a few changes to this video. Um, please let me know what you think. So I added an intro video, which was kindly donated by a subscriber of Anna. So thank you so much for that. I think it adds a level of professionalism to my videos. And I also added the photo of the paints that I used during the shoot at the beginning. So let me know if that helps at all. Thank you all for watching.